Welcome to lecture 60, exercise 1. The challenge for this exercise is to create a class named square that contains fields for area and the length of a side and whose constructor requires a parameter for the length of one side of a square. The constructor assigns its parameter to the length of the square side field and calls a private method that computes the area field. Also include a read only property or read only properties to get the square side and area. In the main method, create an array of 10 square objects with sides that have values of 1 through 10. Display the values of each square. So we're basically building a square class that has a constructor that takes in one side. Because it's a square, all four sides are the same length. There's going to be two pieces of private data, the length of one side and the area, which is just length times width, which is basically just the number times itself. When the constructor gets called and we assign the private data, we want to create a private method that actually computes the area. So that area, that length times width, is going to be a function that's job is just to do that and we'll call that in the constructor. And then read only properties. So we know how to make it read only. We'll make read only properties that actually display the side and the area. And then lastly, we create that array of the values one to 10. So if you think you could do this challenge on your own, go ahead and try it now. If not, I'm going to solve it. So let's start off by creating the square class. So we go add new item, select class, and it's gonna be called square, hit enter. So it says we need two pieces of data, we need the side, one side and the area. So I'll make them both integers. So I'm gonna say private int uh, side, I'll say side, and private int area. So I have the side and the area. Now it says build the constructor and assign its parameter to the length of the square side. So the constructor only takes in one int for length. So I'm going to say public square because this, remember constructor has no return type. I'm going to say int side. Once I get that side into the constructor, I'm going to, I'm going to assign that side to the side private data. So I'm going to say this dot side equals side. I'm saying this dot so I can differentiate between this side right here and this side right there. The this side means that it's going to access the classes side and not the actual parameter. So I have that side. Now it says once I have that uh, set up, I need to make the constructor call a private method that computes the area. So I want to make a private method called private void because it's not returning anything. It's just setting the area private void calc area no parameters because it has all the information it needs from the class itself and all it's going to do is say area or i can say this dot area it doesn't matter area equals side times side which is basically length times width but because it's a square every side is the same okay now that i actually have the function once the side is set inside of this constructor we're going to then right away calculate the average, I mean the area. So I'm going to say calc area right after. I'm going to call that function, which is job is to calculate the area. And now the area will, will be set also. So once the square is created, the area will also be calculated. Okay. Now it says include read only properties to get the square side and the area. So we know how to do that. We can actually... We could have used auto implemented properties or sticking with the private data already. We can just make two properties. We could say public int side get return side. So this is read only because I'm only supplying a get. There's no other way to set it because I'm not supplying a set accessor. So you only can get it. To make it now a read only area, I'll do the same thing public int area get return area so now I can return the area so now both of these are read only that gets the data for our private data and I'm pretty sure that's it for our class so our class is done 
Now it says in the main method, create an array of 10 square objects with sides that have the values of 1 through 10. So in our array, we'll just put in the values of 1 through 10. And then we'll pass, we'll pass that into the constructor of each of each element. So let's start off by actually creating that array of 10 squares. So we're going to say square array squares equals new square array 10. We have 10 squares. So this is just for the actual empty locations. Now we need to fill each location calling the constructor on each element. So I want to say for int i equals 1 because it wants to go 1 to 10. So I'm going to say int i equals 1 as long as i is less than 11. Or you can say as long as i is less than or equal to 10. Either one works. i++. plus plus. So this will still do 10 no matter what. Now, when I actually access the element, this is a little tricky. Because I started i at 1, it's going to skip over the first element if I just plug in i. So I can either make this start at 0 and go to, 10, go to 9, and then when I actually call in the constructor, pass in i plus 1, or I can then, when I access the index, do i minus 1. Let me show you what I mean. So in this setup, when I try to create the new square, I would have to say squares sub i minus 1 equals new square, and then I'll pass in i. So what's happening here is because i is starting at 1, I need to say, okay, start at the, start at the first element in the square array, which is 0. So that's 1 minus 1 would be 0. So that gets the first element in the array, and then I say it equals new square of i. So that will pass in the 1 there, because we want squares to be 1 to 10, so we need to pass in the 1 to 10 there. So that's the first way we could do it, or we can say, okay, have this start at 0, go to 10, so as long as i is less than 10, then we can change this to i, so every element square sub i, that will work fine now, but then when we actually pass in the value, if I do it like this, the first element will be 0, or the first square will be 0. And then it will do 0 times 0 inside the class. We don't want that because we want 1 through 10. So then here I'll have to do i plus 1 to make it work. So either way works fine. This way, I would probably actually do it this way. It makes a little bit more sense. So now that I actually created all my squares, it says the last thing to do is display the value for each square. I'm guessing it wants the actual, we could actually print the side and the area for each one. Now, we can make a separate for loop for this, or we can be efficient and just do it right after. After we create it, print it right away, the, the user won't know what's actually going on. It's, it's more efficient to do it in the same exact loop. So after we create the array for that spot, we'll then print it. So we'll say const.write line. The first um, placeholder will be the, the, uh, the amount of uh, the length of each side. So that'll be the length of each side, comma, and then we'll actually put the area. So then to plug it in, we're going to say squares sub i dot side, comma, squares sub i dot area. So the side gets plugged into there, and the area gets plugged into there. So if we go ahead and try running this, let's see what happens. So you can see we created 10 squares. The first square had a length of 1, the area is 1. The second had a length of 2, so the area is 4, and so on. The last one is a length of 10, so the area is 100. So a lot of things are going on here. We have a class that's calling a private function. We have properties, private data, we have a constructor. Then we have an array of objects that, that we are creating with the new keyword, calling the constructor every single time. And then we print out the sides and the area for each square. Just to go over, when I call this new square, passing i plus 1, Let's say it's the first iteration, so i is 0. It will do create a new square of 0 plus 1. That means a square of 1 length. It comes into here, so side is 1. Now this side becomes 1, and then it calls calculate area, which comes into here and says area is equal to side times side. So then area equals 1 times 1. Area is now 1. And then when I get the area to print it, it will say 1. So that's basically what's going on in a nutshell. So if you actually did this on your own, that's really good because there's a lot of different topics going on. But if you didn't get it on your own 
as long as you sort of understand this, you're making progress, so do not worry.